Hello everyone, today we are going to be painting the Golden Shiner swim bait for a client of mine, Harley. Um, I'm sure he's going to love it, I've already actually sent him pictures and he's ecstatic, can't wait to get it. So here we go. First and foremost, anytime you're painting a glide bait or any bait that has hinges or any moving parts like this, you have to protect them somehow. Um, paint gets in there or especially and more so your clear coat and top coat, uh, it will completely seize the whole bait up and you won't be able to use it. Um, so I'm taking that very seriously here and putting a lot of turns on this rubber band to make sure that that hinge is protected. Alrighty, so here we go. Now first I'm going to take opaque black. I'm going to thin that out actually a bit. Um, a lot of people don't thin out when they're just doing base coats, uh, but I just like my gun to shoot smoothly, so I do. Um, black undercoat and uh, oh, what's it called? 4011 I think is what the thinner um, is referred to Createx paint thinner so just laying down a smooth even um, coat of opaque black on here first Get the belly. Now I always shoot a little bit in the groove simple because uh, I like it to look like the rest of the bait. I just want it to look nice and complete. Um, and near the end when I'm putting the clear coat on I'll actually brush just a tiny bit just over those edges there to keep that paint from um, being dissolved away and, uh, by the water. A lot of people gasp when they see me do that but as long as you don't get it down underneath all those rubber bands you're good to go now this is actually a trick I picked up I can't remember who um, these little I think crocheting or cross stitching I don't know um, I'm not a grandma but you buy two of them and put your lure in between them and hold it into place and hold that mesh down tightly with the magnets around and uh, it's the best way I've found yet for scaling so as you saw, I put the uh, metallic, metallic bronze paint in, thinned it down quite a bit as well, um, and I'm actually lowering the PSI on my compressor down uh, to about 20. Um, you, you don't want to shoot the paint too hard when you're doing scaling like this. The, the paint can sometimes get underneath of that, uh, that mesh, and if it does, it, you, you will see it, and it, it doesn't look good. So. You want to hold it on tight with the magnets and then lower your PSI. It's just a little bit of insurance. Um, it does require you to make more passes. Um, as you can see, <laughs> I've only just begun. Um, but you end up with a better, better product in the end. So it's definitely worth it. The only thing about this that I don't like, and you saw me there, um, trying to get paint on the spine while you have this mesh on is really difficult simply because you've got the magnets there and actually the mesh isn't really pressing against the top so um, that's the only downside about this you can't get your scaling on the top now what you could do is when you're done with this you could take it and then just take some more of this fabric put it over the top and but your scales aren't going to match up i've tried it before it didn't look great um, so you'll see what i do uh, when i get there i just uh paint it gold and move on it's not it's honestly not noticeable it's probably just noticeable noticeable to me because I'm painting it and I want I want it to be perfect um, but that's not really feasible so now the biggest part is just making sure that the saturation on both sides of the bait are the same meaning uh, thickness of paint I guess is the easiest way to put it if you have more paint on one side of the bait than the other then that side will be more whatever in this case gold it would be more gold um, and especially when you do a black base coat sometimes it takes a lot of paint um, to get your desired hue um, on the lure so again thin coats 
at an angle um, and then yeah try to get it across the as much of the bait as you can and then once you take it out you can finish up the top of the bottom Good. Pretty even. Yep, pretty good. Okay. Check it out. Looks pretty good. I don't see where no paint got under the mesh. All the scales are defined. That looks nice. And then just paint the spine. It's a lot less noticeable on lures like this that have thin spines on them. Uh, is, there's just not much really to to show scaling anyway, so it, it really uh, doesn't hurt anything. So yes, as you can see on the gill plate there, it still has scaling um, and it shouldn't, uh, but that's okay. I knew that. Um, and I want the head and gill plates to be more saturated anyway um, and to have a lot of this gold, the bronze, I guess you should call it, uh, flake in the paint because as you'll see here momentarily, I'm going to shoot a, uh, a see-through paint over top of it. Um, it's called Candy. Uh, Candy 2.0 is the, the type of paint and when you put it over a paint that has meta metallic flake or anything like that in it, man, it just, it pop, it looks so good. Um, so I'm really kind of building it up on the head um, and the gill plates there in preparation of shooting the uh, Candy 2.0 on top of it. Uh, but that'll be a little ways down. We got to put fins on her first, so I think we're almost there. It actually is a very easy pattern to paint. It's not very many steps in it, and there's really only, I guess, three colors black bronze and oh four uh, black bronze grabber orange and poison green which I'll show you why I use poison green actually I, I always use poison green when I do shiner patterns um, it's a weak color so it doesn't really show up much on top of the metallic it just kind of gives a hue and uh, you'll see here shortly um, I'm actually going to show you my reference picture of the green or the gold shiner, sorry, um, that I'm imitating here. Uh, and it does have a green hue to it. Now this is actually very important. When you use a stencil, they don't make two versions of a fin, right? There's not that fin and then a mirror image of it. You just have to flip the stencil over and use the other side of the stencil. But if you do that right after you used the one side, there's wet paint on it. So laying it down, and getting all that wet paint off before you flip it over is going to keep you from, when you remove that stencil, cussing and throwing the lure across the room and storming off. <laughs> uh, it'll keep you from getting all that nasty paint where you don't want it. Um, so, and then here I'm realizing I'm right-handed. I don't like shooting paint with my left hand, so I'm just going to switch this around a little bit and pinch it right past the gill plate. That gill plate likes to hold this stencil up off the bait, um, and that's bad. You do that, then paint gets under it, and your your fin won't look good, it'll look fuzzy, um, and just you'll just have paint where it's not supposed to be, and let's face it, the name of the game here is controlling where the paint goes, so. Helping Hands gave up on me a little bit there, but oh, out of frame, awesome. <laughs> so I put white down, because of that. Grabber Orange Candy 2.0. This is the see-through paint. So as you're going to see, I'm going to be able to paint this on top of the white, and you're not really going to see it much on the on the scales at all, but what you are going to, it's going to turn that white orange. Um, I haven't found an easier 
more efficient way to do this. Um, white really picks up that, those candy paints well, um, and now you can't tell it was ever white. Um, and it kind of makes them pop. And you'll see, once I clear coat it, it, it actually looks like it's on a different level um, of the bait. Like it looks like it's raised up off of the body. And I, I don't know if that's exactly why. I'm, I am relatively new to airbrushing, but I did it once and it looked awesome, so I just keep doing it. <laughs> there we go. And now really hit the, the head, the gill plate chin and, and the spine with that grabber orange it just really kind of rounds out that gold hue makes everything look really nice always take a close look at everything before you move on to another step Okay, and now it's time for the poison green. And here comes the shiner with the green hue there. That's what I'm trying to go for. Actually, I really don't want it to be quite that green because uh, that's not every shiner, um, but a lot of them do. So I've used the poison green um, rather than the emerald green. The emerald green is much darker and a much stronger color. And I've never tried it actually, but I'm afraid that it would just overpower um, the orange and the gold uh, so as you can see if you look where the lights reflecting that's where you're gonna see that green hue and that's really all I want on there um, just want those bass or whatever fish you're trying to catch with this thing to to think yeah I've seen that before it's probably real <laughs> and yeah the more coats you put on the more effect you're gonna get there, you're really starting to see that green on it now. That looks good. All right. I believe it's, uh, is it time for eyes? Yep, time for eyes. Now, oh, I actually do mess up here. Um, between this scene and the last scene I had a phone call I thought it was enough time for this to have dried and right there and you see me look at my finger oh, what's that oh, oh, okay I ignore it because I'm hoping I'm wrong I wasn't wrong the paint was still wet and when I pressed really hard to get that eye on there um, it left a fingerprint on the gill plate you can see it right there um, so and that's me looking back at my finger oh <laughs> I almost cut this and fixed it, but then I thought, you know what, it would be beneficial to some people, I guess, to see that sometimes you make mistakes and the best way to learn how to fix them is to try. So that's what I did. It's not a complicated fix, just put a little bit more grabber orange in the, in the uh, airbrush, um, touch it up a little bit there on the gill plate. I do notice after I do that, uh, that it's a little bit more saturated on this side so I actually do end up hitting the other side a little bit more with that grabber orange um, just to even them up you want both sides of your bait to look the same <laughs> but not quite turn it oh other side forgot <laughs> now I do already have the eye on there so I have to be careful not to get this stuff on the eye but it is very transparent so I would have to put a lot on for it to really show up. And now we're good. Alright, eye number two. I have heat set this thing thoroughly now so I will not be making that same mistake again. in place now it's time to brand it I'm sure you already know if you're watching this video but um, I am half of bent rod fishing uh, my brother Derek and I started this business back in November of 2021 um, so we're 
still kind of getting our feet under us and we started painting before then but we didn't really start building our website and making it our business until um, November of 2021 so that being said we brand all of our baits this is called water slide um, it's actually really cool uh, you can print these at, at your home at home on your home printer um, we use Adobe Illustrator just type in whatever it is in whatever font you want shrink it down to the size you want and then just cover the whole page in it print it out and you just take the paper outside put a couple coats of like Krylon spray um, on it and let it dry well, one coat at a time that's important one coat let it dry for about 15 minutes another coat do that until you've got about four or five coats on it um, and then you just cut them out there you go stick them in water and they will immediately just like you see there kind of uh, curl up a bit like like the like the letter C and for me the best way to figure out when it's ready to come out is when that C starts to relax when it when it starts to flatten itself back out then you know it's it's soaked up all the water that it needs to and, it, and it's ready to go <clears throat> clean paper towels very important on this step have a clean paper towel ready the last thing you want is to start putting this thing on the lure and then realize you don't have one ready and be walking around your wherever your, your shop looking for paper towels and this is why they call it water slide so now this is actually the first time I've branded one of these lures. I've only ever painted one of these glide baits once and it was for me for personal use so I did not brand that one. Um, so I was a little uncomfortable doing this. It's a, it's a, uh, not a good position for my hands um, and as you can see if you look closely there the little dangly tail of the lowercase g on fishing is hanging over the edge and that's not good. When you go to clear coat it, uh, that will stick out. It will mess everything up. And while I'm trying to adjust it, it just comes off. That's okay. It's probably less than a penny worth of material there. So deep breath, cut another one out, and do it again. I'm going to start on the other side this time. Learned my lesson. Here we go. Now with this, light pressure doesn't have to be really hard. You just want to make sure there's no air under it and no water under it. And then I almost mess up right there. <laughs> but you keep it down, make sure no water, no air under it. Oh, actually, very important. Before you water slide, spray this thing down with some kind of a top coat. Because um, all these paints you're using are water soluble. So if you do that, before putting some kind of Krylon or whatever, UVLS, I think is another acceptable thing you can put on it. Um, just a thin, really, really thin coat of some kind of a top coat um, to protect the paint while you do the water slide there. And then there's the top coat. Now we normally dip our lures um, here at Bent Rod, but as I was saying before in the beginning, can't really dip these um, hinged lures because uh, it'll go in there and it'll just seize everything up so that is an acid brush I do not like acid brushes get out of here this you got soft supple that's where it's at so I used to use acid brushes when I had to brush and the bristles are just so stiff I mean it literally looks like like the hair from a horse's tail or something like very coarse very stiff and it just it left uh, bristle marks, I guess is what you could call it. Um, I just, I, I didn't like it. I hated, hated brushing epoxy on because of those brushes. Um, and then finally one day in Hobby Lobby, I remembered, and these aren't even nice. I think it was like a $6 pack of like 10 brushes, um, variety pack, but it made it. And now I don't mind. But this, this is the magic part. When you start putting clear coat on, all your colors pop more. Your, the, the black is blacker. Like it just everything just goes to high def, if you will. Depending on how old you are, whoever's listening to this, it's, it's 
scary to realize that there are people out there today that have never not known high def. <laughs> but if you're like me, uh, in your 40s or more, you do. You remember standard definition televisions and putting a top coat like this on your lure is like, it's 4K. It just makes everything look so sexy. Do not get your top coat in that groove on these glide baits. There's a little soft little plastic tail that you have to feed in there. And if you get this top coat in there now um, and then cure it, it's gonna make your life difficult. So really try if you're brushing these on like this to, I try to lift my brush when I get close to that and just kind of flick quickly um, near the end. I tend to put this stuff on thick, especially if I'm making it for a customer. Um, to me, thicker clear coat means more durable. And durability is very important to us here at Bent Rye. We want our customers to, you know, write to us or you know, chat whatever a year from now and say, "Man, I'm still using that. I've caught you know 20 fish on this glide bait and still going strong. Thank you. You know, whatever." Uh, that's what we want. That's what we go for. So I put the stuff on thick. Um, it's just maybe it's because we've always dipped them, in which um, it, that does put them on much thicker uh, than when you're brushing normally. But I try to be very liberal uh, with the Illumi UV when I'm brushing stuff on for a client. It really does just make it pop. Pretty good, pretty even. If you go to our website, you can actually tell us what you want, upload pictures, and we will paint it for you exactly how you want it. So, and this is the UV box. Make all that top coat harden. And yeah, put the lid on, reflective lid, that's important. And now I'm just going to shut up and let you guys enjoy the finished product. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and stay bent.